So here is the Hermes Lite. It's an open source, direct up and down conversion software defined amateur radio HF transceiver. And it's pretty cool. This is a product of Maker Fabs. I want to do a quick thank you to my friend Sideboom who sent this to me so I could do this video. This is the main board. I've already taken it out of the anti static bag. We're going to go over the different parts and the components of this a little bit later, but taking a quick look at it, what's really interesting about this product is that the brain or the CPU of this device is actually a cable modem chip or processor, and uh, it makes this thing work pretty well. Here are a couple of inputs. I believe they're used for external clocks. It has a 101 gigabit uh, Ethernet port on this. We're going to take a little bit of a deeper dive. I just wanted to show the board quickly so you could get an idea of what we're working with. PCBWay is hosting their fourth annual PCB design contest. The contest is focused on two main themes, Internet of Things and Robotics. Project release time is from August 9th through November 30th. Review time is December 1st through December 12th. Results are announced on December 13th. Project submission is easy. Rules are simple with prize pack giveaways. First, second, and third place prizes consist of cash, coupons, and giveaways. There is also a popular design prize and a participation prize. Judges consist of well-known personalities from the makerspace. Get your submission in now for a chance to win. The product comes with a couple of heat sinks, which we'll apply, and it comes with some extra cable or wire. I'm not exactly sure why it does that. Let's go ahead and get this put away, and then we are going to take a look at the attachment board that comes with it. And here you can see the N2ARD, and this is a filtering board for the Hermes Light 2. Let's go ahead and get it out of the box and see what we're working with. It has a header connection is how you connect the two boards together. Out of the back, you have some various inputs. One of those is going to be your antenna output, and that's where we'll connect our antenna. This device needs to be controlled by a computer, which works over the ethernet port. And we're gonna cover all of that. You can see how it matches up. And still this product or device or whatever you wanna call a transceiver is really small. It looks like it'd be very convenient and quite packable. Of course, you'll need the computer to control it. And what we have here is the case or product enclosure. It comes with a couple things, front and back panel. It comes with a heat sink, some screws, and then we have the actual enclosure itself. Everything seems to be made out of an aluminum type metal this is the one panel. It has some cutouts where you'll be able to see um, LED displays. And then this would be the enclosure kit. Let's go ahead and get this thing opened. All around, it's a pretty nice DIY kit. I'm quite excited to uh, put this thing together and see how it works. I wanted to take a quick minute to talk about this heat sink. You have to be careful when you install this heat sink. You want to make sure that you get it correctly aligned underneath of the pad. The other thing is it requires you to drill a hole in the enclosure and you need to supply your own mounting screw. I am not going to install the heat sink as part of this project as the radio is not mine and I'm not sure what the end state design or configuration is going to be from Sideboom. So I'm going to leave this task up to him. Everything fits securely in the case and quite snugly. You need to make sure that you use the pin header connector that I spoke about earlier to connect the two boards together. What I'm going to do now is start screwing this case together. Here's a quick snapshot of both of the boards connected together. You can see the construction of this board is pretty nice and it is a quality job. 
Here the board is in the case with the heat sinks applied to the two main chips. Nothing fancy here, folks. In this next pick, we're going to take a quick look at the front of the radio. I believe this is the front, but I'm not 100% sure. You can see the power connector, you can see the Ethernet port, and you can see your two clock ports along with a key or PTT. And then this would be the back end where you have your RF1 and your antenna connectors. And some other accessories that can be added to this also have cutouts on this board. I wanted to mention that because these are SMA connectors for your antenna, I did pick up a couple of these pigtails. I think that's what you call them. Anyhow, they're SMA to your standard antenna connectors. And I'm just going to go ahead and connect one right here. One of the things that you can do is turn these counterclockwise before screwing to make sure that you don't cross thread your connection. Um, and they're easy to go on, and that's what we're going to use to connect this to our antenna. I had to supply my own power cable. I had this 5.1 millimeter connector that I can use to connect to the power outlet on the Hermes light. And then I just have Anderson power pole so I can connect this to a battery or whatever kind of power source I use in my shack. The hobby is, is lying or else they never tried it. Uh, WB3 EML, WB4 Fox Sugar Victor, go ahead. So I wanted to take a few minutes to take a look at the Maker Fabs website. And that's where this particular product comes from. This is open source, so you will see copies and clones on the market. Here you can see the board is 289 and it's out of stock. It's my understanding due to the chip shortage, it's out of stock indefinitely. The cable modem chip that runs this SDR is in short supply. And it's my understanding that at one time you could get it for about $35. Now it's around $175. I'll include a link below and you can come down here and you can check it out for yourself. This is a link to the final assembly instructions and I'll post a link to this below as well. And you can see the main board. It talks about the companion board, the enclosure and end plates. It goes through the assembly procedure in a straightforward manner and gives you plenty of tips and tricks that you would need for assembly. Here is another link that I'll include below, and this is the quick install, and this is for using a piece of software called SDR Console. I wanted to mention that there are a number of SDR software packages that you can use for this radio across many platforms, Windows, Linux, Macintosh is my understanding. We went with the SDR Console software, one, because I'm familiar with it, and two, it seems to be the most recommended. One of the things that I'll mention is, is that you can plug the Hermes Light 2 into a router on your network and it will be auto discovered by your computer. Or you can direct connect it to an Ethernet port on your computer, which is what I did, and it works fine. The installation procedures are straightforward. I'm not going to go through it because it's pretty simple and you can check out this link. It does install some other dependencies or software package required for SDR console. When you first start the software, you have to go in and you have to pick a radio definition. You can search, pick Hermes Light, and then go ahead and add that to your device list. Highlight that device and then click start, and then you can run. So let's talk a little bit about the Hermes Light. It's a software defined radio or SDR transceiver, meaning it can both send and receive signals. It's 100% open source project. The designers have entered into a partnership with Maker Fabs, 
you can buy these products when in stock from Maker Fabs. It's built around a repurposed cable modem integrated circuit. It has direct up and down conversion. It does not use an analog mixer, which helps it have lower noise. The bandwidth is from DC or zero hertz all the way up to 38 megahertz, and it is capable of five watts of power output. As mentioned, the Hermes Lite uses a cable modem chip, specifically the AD9866 broadband modem chip. It's a low cost 3.3 volt CMOS chip, and it's used in broadband modems. It has 12 bit digital to audio conversion, and it has an integrated 23 dB line divider with 19.5 dB gain control negative 12 dB to plus 48 dB low noise PGA. Third order programmable low pass, low pass filters. In terms of RF output, the Hermes Light 2 comes with a high quality preamp, five watts of output power. So it's considered a QRP or low power radio, 12 bit DAC and RF filters for harmonic suppression. The Hermes Light 2 for its FPGA uses a Cyclone 4 for digital signal processing. You connect this device to your computer via the Ethernet port or to your network via the Ethernet port. It is an auto sensing 100 megabits to 1 gigabit auto sensing port. It has DHCP enabled and you can connect it directly to the host. Seven, three. The station ending in Alpha something Echo. Alpha flight Echo. Okay, and what's the prefix? Hello, Nancy 4. Hello, Nancy 4, Alpha Mike Echo. You have absolutely instant service. Thank you, Ron. Echo, yeah. You were all so early today. I didn't know if you were leaving early or what, but uh, anyway. Let's take a look at the transmit capabilities. We need to go to the transmit tab and then open up the DSP window. You can scroll through this window and you can see various options for configuration. One of the things that we're going to do is first do a two tone test. I'm also going to feed this into an oscilloscope and a spectrum analyzer. I want to make sure that my TX frequency is synchronized with my RX frequency and I'm on lower sideband. I select a tone option and then I press the TX button. And then you see two tones emitted. I believe these are 700 and 900 hertz tones. By unchecking the tone box and then pressing the TX button, I can do an audio or phone transmission. Let's go ahead and do that now. Now I have this muted, but as you can see, it modulates a signal. From the menu bar, you wanna go up and you wanna click on options. And that will allow you to make any configuration changes for transmission. You can see that there are a number of transmission settings that can be made. I'm just going to quickly click through these. You'll see an option specific to Hermes Light, and then click the configuration button there. You want to make sure that you've enabled your filter board and that N2 ARD is highlighted. Then we want to go to TX options, and I want to enable my onboard power amplifier. That way I can transmit at 5 watts. Admittedly, I'm not an expert on oscilloscopes, but I was able to feed the signal into my signal oscilloscope. This is the two-tone test, and as you can see, we have a pretty decently shaped sinusoidal wave, leading me to believe that the signal output is clean. I also connected the radio up to my siglant spectrum analyzer to test for spurious emissions or harmonics, and as you can see, it's pretty clean from a spectrum standpoint. I did have a 40 dB attenuator in line with my signal. 
all in all, I'm very happy with this radio. I like it quite a bit, and I want to thank Sideboom for sending it to me for my consideration. I'd like to get one of these for myself, so hopefully they get back on stock, and then I'll go ahead and place an order. Thanks for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and leave them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks again.